Welcome back to another Python tutorial. So we're continuing our discussion on data structures. So basically this series is dedicated to those individuals who might be going through the interview process and they're expected to know different types of data structures and how to perform certain operations on these data structures and understanding the advantages and disadvantages. So in our last little uh, segment, we talked about single linked list. We talked about how they were structured, the operations we could perform, and then some of the performance aspects of those particular data structures. Now that we understand single linked lists, we're going to move on to the next extension of that particular data structure. Doubly linked lists are also called double linked lists. Um, how do they differ? What are the advantages, disadvantages, and, and really how does that translate into performance? Well, remember with a single link list, they were basically made up of a collection of nodes. That node was defined by two pieces of information, a value and a pointer. That pointer simply pointed to the next node. All we're doing with a double link list is we're extending that node object to now include a third component. That third component is another pointer but instead of pointing to the next node, it is going to point to the previous node. So I have a nice little visual right here that kind of helps visualize what that pointer would look like. So a collection of these nodes that point forward or backwards is a double linked list. At the head of our list, um, that previous pointer will point to nothing. And then at the end of our list, that next pointer will point to nothing. Um, you know, what are some, I guess, advantages of to why you would want to use a, basically, why would you want to use a, a double linked list over a single linked list? Well, some of the advantages are it can be traversed both forward and backwards. There are also delete operations that are more efficient if the pointer to the node to be deleted is given. So we can actually um, do certain delete operations more efficiently than if with a single linked list. Also, we can quickly insert a new node before a given node. So the insertion component is also a lot easier. So uh, very interesting stuff for sure. And then also there are some disadvantages that come along with using these uh, double link lists. So for example, because we have an extra pointer, they do take up more space. Um, that is kind of really the biggest drawback when it comes to using a double linked list. Also, some operations are now going to be a little bit more complex because we have to maintain this previous pointer. So we're going to see when we have to go and reassign nodes, we now have to take this other previous pointer into consideration. Now, when I release the documentation on this particular topic, I probably will add a couple more points and uh, things for you know you to reference. I do have a little, um, not that, performance table. Uh, so that way you can kind of see uh, the operations and, and the big old complexity that goes along with them. So don't think this is going to kind of be a final product. I probably will be adding to it. And then um, I'll just be adding that to the single linked list folder. It's in the data structures one. All right, so that being said, let's get started. All righty. First thing, we're going to define our node object. So we're going to define the initialization of our wonderful node object. It's going to be the node itself, and it's going to be defined by three parameters. Next node, that will equal none. And then now we're going to have that third one called previous node. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, just set the data property of our node equal to the data that we was passed through. And then we're going to also define a next node property. And that's going to equal our next node. And then we're going to have a previous node. That's the third component. And again, that will be the pointer to the previous node. Now, in the previous series, I did discuss that we can also define some methods that get data, that get next, set next. Um, really all you would be doing in this series is you would just now be defining two new methods, one for get previous and then one for set previous. For the most part, I'm not actually going to cover it in this particular video just because in the last one I, I really showed that 
you know, you can do the properties, you can do the methods. It, it's really all the same thing. So just for simplicity at this point, I will just assume that we want to use more of the properties than the actual methods themselves. Alrighty, let's define our double linked list. Okay, and that again, we're going to set up with a class object. Okay, so let's define a couple things. Um, we're going to have to define an initialization method uh, traversing our list. So we're going to see how to actually traverse our entire list and print out each value. We're going to have to get the list size, and then we'll do one insert operation before closing out the video. And then in the next couple of videos, we'll talk about um, more insert operations, and then we'll move on to some other stuff. So let's define our initialization, and we'll say take the list itself, and it's going to have a head. So this is just defining that head property. Well, when we initialize the, li the, the list, that head's going to be nothing because we have no nodes in it. So really, all it's going to be doing is just setting that head equal to none. That's all. The head being the, uh, the first node in our particular list. All right. So let's now define traversing our list. Again, that's going to take the list itself. All righty. And then from here, we need to basically start at our first node. So really, all we're going to do is we're going to start at our first node, and we're going to traverse until we reach the end node. So at each node, we're going to print the value, and then we're going to grab the node that comes after it. So as long as the node that we're currently on doesn't equal none, like in this case, print the piece of data that belongs to the node, and then grab the node that's after it. But if it, do, if it does equal none, then just leave the loop. So the first thing we do is grab the first node. And that's going to be something called current node. And that will just be the head. And then from here, we'll say while current node does not equal none, what do we want to do? Well, the first thing we want to do is we want to print the data. So we'll print the current node dot data property. And then we want to set the new current node equal to the old current node, but we want to make sure we grab the node that comes after the old current node. And really what you're saying here is keep going until you reach the end of the list. Print the data, grab the node, after the old current one. That's all. So that will traverse the list. We also need to get the list size. Well, you'll be very shocked, I know, but it's really just the same exact that we were doing up at the traversing one. So really, all I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this little guy right here, and we're just going to change a couple different components. So for this part, that's fine, but we are going to define a new uh, incrementer. And really, all this is going to be doing is we're going to start at zero. And what we're going to be doing is as we traverse our list, we're just going to increment that incrementer by one. And so we'll say uh, define incrementer, and we'll say call it count, and that equals zero. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say, OK, well, instead of printing at this point, we're going to say take the count, set it equal to the old count plus one. This still stays the same because we still want to make sure that we go to the next node. Hopefully you see why we would want to do this. Imagine we didn't have this line here. Ask yourself, would this condition ever not be true? Well, it wouldn't because the current node is what we define up here. And the current node is self.head. Well, imagine if the self.head had a value in it already. If we didn't include this line, then basically is we would increment the count and we would say, okay, well, what is the current node? Well, it's just still equals to self.head. Oh, okay, so it doesn't equal none, so just increment it. So basically, if you don't add this little line here, you're gonna have an infinite loop. You don't want that. This line right here is what basically goes to that next node. It's where you're reassigning that current node. If you don't do that, you will have an infinite loop and you'll be seeing like, why is it not ending? Why is it not ending? I know my list isn't that long. It's because you didn't go to the next node. You didn't reassign it. And then finally, we want to make sure we return something back to the user. So we want to return the count. All right. So we got the list size. We traversed the list. 
let's do one insert operation and then we'll test out these three methods that we defined about our double linked list. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna define insert beginning. All this means is that we're gonna insert a node, but we're gonna insert it to the beginning of our double linked list. So really all we're doing is we're gonna take our head and if, well, if there is a head and we're just gonna kind of push it to, to point two and then we're gonna insert that new node to point one. That's really all we're doing. So we're gonna push this one over here, we're gonna reassign the pointer, and then that's it. And so this one is actually gonna take a piece of data, so it is assuming you're passing something through. We will first define a new node, and what we'll do here is we'll say, hey, that new node equals node.data. And then we need to set the next node that comes after our new node. Well, in this case, if our old node was the old head, we just want to say, hey, take the new node, take the node and set the next node that comes after it, set it equal to the old head. That's all, set the next node equal to the old head. That's all. Then from here, because it's the head, it will have no previous node. So because this new node is now the new head, we want to make sure that the previous node pointer points to nothing. So because it's the head, the previous pointer will point to nothing. And so we'll take our new node, we'll set the previous node property equal to none. Okay, and then from here, now we need to handle the case where we're not given an empty list. So we need to handle the case where it is not an empty list because if it's an empty list, we pretty much only have to add one more line and we're good. But it's, you can't assume that when you're inserting in the beginning that it's always going to be an empty list. So what we're gonna say is if self.head does not equal none, really in other words, you have an element in your head, then set self.head dot previous node, make sure the head's previous node equals the new node. Take the old head, take that previous pointer that belongs to the old head and make sure it's pointing to the new node that we're gonna insert in the beginning. That's all. Now we can update the head and we wanna say, hey, the new head is simply the new node. That's all. Okay, so handle the non-empty list case. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's try everything out, make sure it works before we close out the video. Where are my notes? There's my notes. Define a new list. We'll call it double list. It will equal a double linked list. And then we'll insert a few values. And we'll say double list.insert beginning, we'll do 90, and then I'm gonna copy this a whole bunch of times. Ninety, 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 and then 80, 70, perfect. So we inserted a few values, and then we're gonna traverse that list. So we're gonna say traverse the list. And I wanna make sure that it's easy for you guys to read. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set ourselves up so that way the other couple of videos go a little bit faster. And we'll say print after insertion. And then I'll copy that. And then we will say double, double list dot traverse. And then one final thing, I do want to make sure that get list size works. Perfect. It's almost something. Did I did something? Oh, well, get size list. Here I go again. It's going to be, I can tell you, it's going to be one of those fun days. Okay, get list size, get list size. Oh, wait, I need to update it. Okay, so 
looks like everything was inserted, which is great. And then we made sure that each one is, um, there's five elements basically. And just so you guys know, so it's like, you know what, well, why is 90 at the end? This was the first one, second one, third one, fourth one, and fifth one. So remember, you keep inserting in the beginning. So this one should technically pop up first, which it does. So just in case you were kind of curious about that one. So with that being said, though, I'm going to close out the video. And then in our next video, we'll continue discussing some insertion operations. And I think, yeah, that'll probably do it for the second video because there's probably going to be about three more operations on that one. And then we'll go into deletion and then we'll go into some just, you know, different things like reversing and, and all that kind of fun stuff. So if you have any questions at this point, please make sure to put them down in the comments below. And then other than that, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks again for watching.